Right. So there are a bunch of different problems that you can attack within advanced manufacturing. We talked about medical, semiconductors, defense, etc. Um, sounds like Hadrian is focused, at least at the moment, on space. And uh, as I mentioned before, there are many people out there, there are many people who disagree with this, but there are many people that think that space or pursuing it is a frivolous industry. Um, I'll just read you one tweet for fun uh, from someone that I saw recently that said, no offense, but I 100% think space colonization is a childish desire. So feel free to respond to that particular tweet. But really what I want to get at is within the sphere of things that you could pursue within Hadrian, why specifically space to start? The really short version is like, Stripe doesn't get to sell to AT&T until they sell to a bunch of white company startups. And there's just a bunch of huge amounts of capital flowing into commercial space, which means there's a bunch of net new spend and they're being run by 30 year olds, not 50 year olds, which, you know, you want to sell the startups at first and you want to hit that early adopter spectrum. So commercial space has all of the complexity of every other industry that we would want to serve in the future. So the automation we're building for commercial space is almost completely transferable, but there's a real need because these companies are trying to go super fast so they will pay for speed. You know, if they are sick of calling Bob's machine shop, but they're young enough from, you know, all these rocket and satellite companies that they're willing to take a shot on something new and really work with us to develop the system versus so it's, it's just your classic early adopter problem. Then I think holistically is like, why go to space uh, at all? Like why put humanity's resources out there? And I think, you know, we could go through this argument of like, you know, space is a war fighting domain. Like you need observability of the planet to stop nuclear launches. So you need satellites, you know, like GPS is a great example. We can go through all like the, time-worn arguments that like most of the medical advances on the planet have been downstream of NASA and the ISS and how that flows through to society and all that other stuff. But all of that is is an abstraction of like, why, you know, why Columbus? Like, why go jump on a shitty raft and go look at a new island in Polynesia as like a tribal leader? Like, you know, in some in some ways it's manifest destiny. Like humans are built to expand and explore and that is just like a core drive of the species. And with that sort of an argument, it just comes down to like growth versus degrowth. Like that is the eternal cultural fight. And you can call it capitalism or communism, or you can call it like the state versus the people, or you can call it decentralization versus centralization. But what it comes down to is like, are we going to use the limited resources on the planet to go get new resources so we can continue this magical species wide journey journey of like, settling the solar system and finding out what's out there and improving our own lives and like going and getting at it? Or are we going to accept the status quo and sit there and like, you know, continue to like shit in a hole instead of inventing the toilet or whatever? Like, and, and all these people out there who are like, by stretching towards the future, we need to concentrate on the problems of today. And what people don't realize is that historically throughout humanity, like you solve poverty by building farms, not by like trying to optimize this shitty, like, hodgepodge hunter gatherer like system that we've got and yes that rewards people you know uh, non-linearly the people who are breaching towards that future and like you leave some people behind but net net that is what takes the band from here to here and everyone's quality of life goes up and at some point the earth's resources are going to die out and we have kind of one shot in the next couple of decades to like expand so that we can get new resources and make ourselves more efficient and start solving all these problems and i think but these, these are all like platitudes and economic arguments over the internal cultural problem of humanity, which is like, do you want to go and do cool shit and like grow as fast as possible and see what's out there? Or do you want to sit there twiddling your thumbs because you're scared? And that is the eternal like growth versus degrowth fight. And everything that we see in the media, whether it's legacy media or politics or wars or, you know, communism versus capitalism or anything is... Or, you know, crony capitalism versus true kind of John Galt capitalism. You know, it's all it's all a poor abstraction over growth versus degrowth. And ultimately, like, you've got to pick a side and I pick growth. And if we're picking growth, then, yeah, let's go invent new technologies and settle the stars and find out what's out there and mine asteroids for resources instead of ripping up forests in the Amazon, you know. But, like, you either have to, like... Basically, it comes down to, like, expansion or population control. You know, like, at a certain point, it all comes down to, like, we're either going to cut down trees or we're going to mine asteroids. Okay, don't want to cut down trees. That makes sense. So let's go, you know, go do something cooler and more sustainable way to do that. But the third option of, like, restricting resources and, you know, this is like a stupid argument over nuclear. I mean, 
you know, like, hey, let's not incur some risk of getting totally clean energy that like net net is way, way, way less uh, morally and economically impactful than solar panels where 90% of the solar panels in the country are being made in China by basically slave labor where millions of minority and immigrant women are being chemically castrated every year and forced into servitude. But so ultimately it's like growth versus degrowth. And I think like the case for space is, it is the last frontier that we have. And you can think about the moon as the eighth continent. And as a species, we're either going to go out and get it and continue to grow and improve things, or we're going to stagnate. And if anyone's choosing to stagnate, you're on the wrong side of history. And like, you're going to get blown past by everyone else. And I just wish people would frame the problem correctly. It's, you know, it's, it's growth versus degrowth. There is no like, economic argument like you're either for humanity as an expansive moral species or you're against it and you know you want to like corral us in this bubble where we're just going to compound the problems i think it's i think it's ridiculous yeah i mean one other way you could put it of growth versus degrowth is also kind of like a zero sum versus positive sum mindset right or of like we can pursue space the technologies will ho hopefully return back to things on earth but also we can pursue space and pursue improving climate change and pursue AI and pursue insert other exciting thing here. Right. It, it's it's not one necessarily versus the other, although I do think it's really important to point out what we've talked about already several times is that, you know, there are several advancements uh, from space. I was looking this up because we're doing an episode with privateer, but like uh, whether it's like LASIK to like limb replacements to tires on your car, oh, yeah. like all of that has been impacted by, you know, unsurprisingly, the very tough engineering challenge, which is to, to build these things in space, return to Earth because it's much easier to actually apply them here. Mm -hmm.